Yes. 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 Now we come to the point of the meeting, the public inquiry. Please, anybody with any questions about township business, please come to the front and speak. Lee Goldberg, 10 Hour Head Road. Um, on the resolutions for 20318, for the um, additional money to consolidate maintenance, it says to a drainage curb and sidewalk project. Is that for one particular project or is that spread across curb and work throughout the township? Throughout the township. So it's not just tied to one thing. Thank you. Um, and for, uh, we were, since Cornine Field just came up, I was just curious, what, so what is our total expenditure now on the total Cornine Field project approaching or at? In terms of total monetary health altogether? Yeah, with the remediation and the field, it's about 2.5 million. Thank you. Um, the question for Mr. Mills um, regarding the um, last Thursday's uh, special meeting where the amendment related to Liberty Greens was um, is passed. Um, the, the way the zoning is laid out, I know they have a 500-foot setback, I guess, for the folks in Liberty Green for the affordable housing units, right? So, it's 500 or 400. 400 I think it was 500. Five, substantial. So it was substantial. But, you know, I mean, again, that meeting was just a week ago. Um, uh, and I think this town kind of and the community has done a great job in addressing the affordable housing issue that's in front of you. But just as we begin to implement this, and these kind of changes get implemented into how that site is going to be designed, there's just something, is that, is that, I'm sure it's legal to do that, to say, put it 500 feet over there. Is, it, is, that, is that setting a precedent for, as we, as other neighborhoods may want to, you know, address how they, where they put affordable housing to say, let's, okay, let's put it, there's something about just let's put it as far away from us as possible. It just doesn't really seem. It was done, there. it's because of the type of units that they're going to be in that development. I mean, some other places are interspersed throughout. Correct. Honeywell, for example. Integrate. Integrated. They're integrated throughout. Right. Because of the number of units that are going there versus how many can actually be built by the developer, they basically need to have a structure that looks completely different than the townhomes. So really for aesthetic purposes, it was kind of intended to be a continuation of how Liberty Green looks, more condos and the new development, and then... I think that might be the feathering that he was referring to as the sort of community was laid out. But yeah, it, so in other words, it wasn't, oh, we're going to stick the affordable housing people over here. It was right. that if you had that structure right on the borderline, you'd be going from townhomes, condos, to a, affordable, a, a larger affordable housing that's all together, and then townhomes, condos again. And it, aesthetically, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't look right right there. Gotcha. Thank you very much. So, all right, thank you. Um, is Mr. Sisson on the phone tonight? Is he dialed in, or? He's not president. He's not president, okay. Because um, I was going to ask him, and I'll ask you, Mr. Dunn, because I hear you. So the vote took place on the amendment last week. I know you voted yes. You sort of indicated so begrudgingly. Yeah, begrudgingly or reluctantly or something along those lines. So obviously, you may have a concern or, or something. Or, um, I was going to ask you to elaborate on that, and I was going to ask Mr. Sisler to elaborate on why he voted no, but I'll, I'll start with you since you're here. Yeah, sure. I. Um The entire affordable housing plan cover up what's happened on the Supreme Court multiple times. It started with the Mount Laurel decision where African American individuals were quite literally, intentionally, unabashedly by the local town of Mount Laurel from being able to acquire home, homes there. Literally, areas were zoned in like wetlands where they knew that African Americans could not build on them. So that's the underlying premise of affordable housing. I think everyone here would agree that. That's deplorable, it's disgusting, and so the Supreme Court did the right thing. And notwithstanding that the Supreme Court ordered Mount Laurel, that they, they couldn't do that, what did Mount Laurel do? They did it anyway. So there's a Mount Laurel too, where the court, they went back to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said, well, since you're not going to listen to our order and do what we said, we're now going to take control of it, and essentially we're going to zone, and we're going to make sure that affordable housing is made. Um, so in the 30 years since those decisions, um, what it's turned into is a mathematical formula where you have experts differing whether this municipality needs 400 units or this one needs 1,000. And the experts 
come up with unique ways to find open areas where things could be built. I laugh sometimes, you know, we had to have our expert go back and rerun the numbers because, you know, frontage along commercial areas were considered open space support, you know, where you could build. My point is, I said begrudgingly because um, I don't think what's being shoved down the throats of municipalities um, by developers who come in and want to build, you know, 200 unit complexes. You sure we'll give you 20 affordable housing units? They're not magnanimous. They're not doing it to help really truly help people. They're doing it because it's a foothold in to get their development built. And so, um, you know, you ask an interesting question. You know, it, is that unit in, in the near the Liberty Green site? You know, it's kind of like, well, we're going to throw them off over there. Um, you know, in a weird way, that some places do that. And so, really, is that the spirit of Mount Laurel to have people in affordable housing and shove them off in the corner? And clearly, not what the Supreme Court intended. And so, I said begrudgingly because although we have to do it, it's been shoved down our throat. We have these arbitrary numbers that these experts in retail will think of. Um, I really just don't think it's the spirit of what the case was decided on, which was that African Americans were literally zoned out of an entire town. And I don't think anyone could ever accuse Mars Township of doing that. Thank you for elaborating on that. Um, and you are elected official, so if you have a concern that's on your mind, you're voting on it. It's just good to know what's on your mind, so I appreciate you sharing that over with us. Appreciate that. Um, the, is there any update, Mayor Mancuso, on any progress at all on the flyover coming off 24? Any further discussions with NJDOT? Um, Interesting. We, uh, I've been, we've been in touch with DOT trying to arrange a meeting for the mayors in the eastern part of, uh, of Morris County to talk about the flyover. Uh, I know that there have been four plans promulgated, and uh, you'll have to elaborate on that a little bit. When it was resolved last year with that NJDOT is going to take one of those, they're going to do up all the plans for that, and then the project's going to be turned over to the County of Morris. The County of Morris is going to apply to TPA transportation planning authority. Planning authority thank you. Um, for the grant funding for that. So it, it's a laborious Process. long time. Yeah. And probably none of us will be here by the time. It gets okay, well, that was going to be my now. I mean, but just to have, to have these things work with the bureaucracy and the forms and the. You're, you're looking eight, eight to ten years out. Okay, eight to ten years out. Thank you very much. That's enough for me Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and last I wanted to bring up, I don't know if anyone else received this. I received this today in the mail from, I guess, uh, from SC, SMC MUA regarding um, something going on with the water. They're saying it's not an emergency. It's nothing crazy going on. But it was an update. I was just wondering, uh, it does look like there's some important information on here. I don't know if we could send out a message around this, or there already has been one sent out, or it's posted on the website. But just the. Uh, it's all set to go tomorrow. We're waiting for the postcards to go out. We'll be mailed out on Monday. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and. That's, that's really all I have. Thank you for your time. Um, I would like to just add a room request. Um, uh, tonight's meeting started at 7. Uh, Yom Kippur, the uh, holiest day in the Jewish community, ended at 7.58 uh, tonight. So um, I, I know this board body has been very considerate of you know holidays in the past and if things happen, but in, you know, in the future, you know, maybe starting an hour later, should the, you know, again, we go by the lunar calendar, so this may happen on a Wednesday, not for another eight years or what have you, but, I uh, appreciate any consideration on that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Can I just ask for one clarification on that? Yeah. Um, can you say again the county on the, the flyer, where the county is coordinating with the Transportation Planning Authority, and then they're going to have a partnership? There are there Two are, of them are going to do that project? Correct. That was the latest game plan, anyway. It's always subject to change. I know. Thank you. So in that vein, last week the discussion was about the light at the end of Punch Bowl and Madison, and you said you, Mr. Quinn said you would talk to the DOT. Any word? I inquired. I had not received a response back. Okay. Which isn't. But at least we're marking, right? You know, you oh yeah, very much so. I mean, usually it's it's unusual. It's once mm -hmm. the traffic signals up. It, it's up there for a couple of weeks and then it goes on flash for a couple of weeks and then it flips over and that's not so. It was installed in March. I think it was going to start in April. Right. So it took 18 months right. before that to get up there. So they didn't wait 10 years for it to start. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
Martin, number 62, the appendix rep. Going back to last week again, um, regarding the ordinance that we, you know, you had looked at and passed last week, um, as I went through that, uh, there were there were like over 200 units that were originally proposed for that property over at St. E's and it's come down to 165. There is a stipulation here that 20% of the total number will be set aside for rental units for low to moderate income households. So that comes to about 33 units mm -hmm. is what it came out to. Is there any, there was no percentage though between the stacked townhouses and what is the other term that we use for the other market? Shared townhouses, is that what you call it? Fancy housing. Oh, sorry. Okay. Non-stacked. Oh, the townhouses are stacked. Correct. But they count the same. Excuse me, I'm sorry. They count the same. Uh, so there's a maximum density of dwellings that can be constructed on that site. Ideally capped at the 165. As Mr. Quinn indicated, they could be stacked if they can meet the requirements, but not all of them could be stacked based on the requirements. So there's a mixture, not a specified formula of 50% stacked. That's what I was wondering. There is no percentage as far as what can be considered stacked versus the, you know, regular townhomes. So it can be any number. I mean, it could be 60% stacked versus 40%. Only if they can meet the requirements for stacked uh, homes. Only if they could meet the requirements for stacked. Uh, the setbacks. Five setbacks and the height. Yeah. Setbacks and the height. Okay. And, the, and the distance from uh, the property line with the rebrands. Right. Exactly. Um, in, in reading through this ordinance and, and the discussion we had last week about a concept plan, which I understand Mr. Miller said that that was not something that was supposed to be public knowledge, but a number of us saw it. And um, based on that, I saw what this was St. E's proposal that came up with that. They were uh, part of the architecture of it, yes. And is that, uh, um, explain something to me. Is St. E's taking that piece of property and selling it, or are they developing it? The former. They're selling it. To they it are developer. selling it. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, that's what we've been told. Oh, okay. Because I, I wondered how they were, were coming up with, with a concept plan if they're selling it. Is that normal for a seller of a piece of property to come up with a concept plan as to what that property should look like if you're sold? Probably part of their marketing of the property. Okay. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Jorke, 601 on Road. Um, first, I just want to echo Lee's comments um, dealing with today being a Jewish holiday. Um, moving forward, I think it would be important for the town and committee to respect that. And, you know, obviously there's not a lot of folks here, and it's important that all residents have the opportunity to attend these meetings. Um, so I just ask that the committee in the future uh, be respectful um, of that. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Committee Manon for explaining your vote last uh, Last meeting, I thought it was very insightful, and I think a lot of folks probably agree with you. Um, and so I appreciate that. Um, I apologize for not hearing the explanation before. I think um, Mr. Wilson asked, but I was curious um, what, would be, what was the cost overrun for Cornine Field? What was the reason for it? Because I just didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. The weather, the, the weather green that we've had over the past several months. Okay. So that. Just it just delayed the, the process, so they had to pay more man hours or just more it's, materials. It's inspectional services. Okay. For suburban who are doing the oversight of the project, and so it's an additional day's work because of all the rain we've had. Okay. And we've had to extend the project for about two months. Gotcha. Um, and then I know there was a meeting uh, recently. I was wondering if there was an update from the committee on the Collinsville playground um, park equipment that was going to be installed. Does the committee have an update on that? So the bid going out and it will be presented to the Township Committee once the bids are received back for the award of the contract. Okay. And when's the bid going out? Once we get it back from the consulting engineer. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to thank the town for working with, I'm a member of Hillside Host Company, I wanted to thank the town for working with Hillside again this year to allow us to use the park behind uh, Hillside Host um, for our October
Oktoberfest, and I'd just like to invite all the members of the committee, the town, everyone who's here, uh, to our fundraiser on October 13th from 2 to 8 p.m. Um, we had a really successful event last year. Um, we had a few concert, um, we had a few bands come to play. Um, some of those proceeds went to um, a member of our ladies' auxiliary family whose husband had passed away recently, um, and we donated a good amount of change to uh, the college fund for those children, those, uh, those children who lost their father recently. Um, so I just encourage everyone to come out. It's a great time. It's for a good cause. And uh, we're just on Western Avenue, uh, 132 right behind the firehouse. So thanks for time tonight. Thank you, sir. And just as a comment, uh, obviously we do everything we possibly can to respect faith, religion, stuff like that. But I looked on my weather chart, and the uh, sunset today was at 651. But, but understand, I mean, these I mean, folks are fasting all day, and they're having dinner with their families now. I understand. Yeah. Anybody else care to be heard? If not, make a motion to close the public session. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, the consent calendar. Madam Clerk. As circulated. As circulated. Great. Uh, comment by Township Committee on Township Matters. Mr. Arminius. Uh, I'd just like to um, mention a couple of things. I for me, the multi-year capital equipment and project plan summary for our parks and recreation department. I so highlight just a couple of things we brought up for Collins Bill basketball and sports court overlay and goal replacement. The goal is to get that done in 2019, hopefully get that budgeted in our next year's budget. Uh, another item that I see on here as well in Collins Bill is that in the 2020 projecting out to um, resurface the tennis courts um, and set that up to be a pickleball court, and maybe when Wilson will discuss a little bit more about some pickleball, which is a new sport that I learned about in the last year. Uh, I haven't played it because of my knees, but it sounds like it's fun. It looks like it's fun. It's fun. But uh, I have nothing else to report there. Okay. Okay. Yes, Wilson? Okay. Um, one quick follow-up to the question about the Collinsville playground. Um, I did go to that meeting, and it, it was stated, as I recall at that meeting, that we were anticipating having the, the bid installation ready to be voted on in October. Am I correct on that? You are correct. And are we on target for that? Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you. Okay. I have a couple of topics I wanted to mention. <clears throat> One is um, I want to congratulate the police officers who were sworn in tonight and thank them in advance for their service to our community and to our schools. And I also wanted to let everyone know that this will be the first time that we will be um, posting video of these swearing in ceremonies on the website and on the township's Facebook page. And I'm very glad that we're doing that. Um, I, as far as pickleball, um, I wanted to thank Bill Falsh and his staff for they took time during an exceptionally busy time of year to work with one of our residents, Richard Maurer, and they offered two free pickleball clinics on the morning of September 5th at the tennis court by Ginty Pool. There were about 40 people there all together. It was super hot, but it was really fun and brave reviews from everyone who was there. And um, in, case you're not, in case you're not familiar with pickleball, it's a new and kind of upcoming sport. It's sort of a cross between table tennis and regular tennis. And it's very popular with all ages, especially seniors. And I thought that Bill and Richard did a really great job on September 5th. And I thank them for their continuing, apparently, to look at ways to make more opportunities like this available in the future. So I'm glad to see that. But one other thing, um, I wanted to comment in a little more detail about something you've heard me mention at several meetings, and that is um, my view of the importance of sharing information with residents about affordable housing issues. Um, I have been advocating for this since January, how important it is to provide our residents with information about affordable housing. I have had several conversations with Mr. Quinn and a few with Mr. Mancuso, but um, I have not spoken with the other members of this committee until tonight. I did have the opportunity to speak with Committeeman Nunn. Um, I've also had the opportunity over the past few years 
um, to speak with our planning officials and I've had various suggestions that I've talked with them over the years about and they've always said we'll do whatever the governing body asks us to do. So I have something that I would like our governing body to ask them to do. And I'd like to take a few minutes tonight to fill in the gaps on what I'm advocating and why. So the proposal that I'm making is that we work with our professionals to produce four, I would call them deliverables. One is a Q&A document or on frequently asked questions about affordable housing. Second would be a summary of key information about affordable housing, and that which I call cliff notes. And there I could see some of the comments Mr. Um, Nunn shared this evening would fit perfectly with the kind of document I'm thinking of. Um, I'd also like to see our professionals, our planning professionals, do a presentation on affordable housing with an opportunity for Q&A afterwards from our residents. And a video of this presentation, I'd like to see it posted on our website at, uh, for future reference. In the months ahead, proposals will be coming before our planning board that are a direct outgrowth of the court settlement that we've agreed to and the zoning ordinances that we've passed to implement that settlement. These proposals will raise a lot of questions. They'll raise a lot of quality of life concerns and they'll raise a lot of issues that connect directly with our affordable housing obligations and the decisions that we've made to meet them. I think it's in everyone's best interest for us to be proactive in sharing background information about affordable housing with the public before these proposals start coming before the planning board. Examples of the types of information I'm talking about, the sort of historical background, that Mr. Dunn was alluding to, some other more basic things. What is affordable housing? How is it defined? Why are we required to provide it? What happens if we don't? I think it's particularly important for residents to understand what, what the builder's remedy is. Many people don't know anything about that. Um, information like this provides context. It helps residents understand what's going on and why. And given that affordable housing is having such a major impact on our town, and given that it's such a complex topic, my opinion is that it merits the kind of standalone coverage that I'm advocating. A Q&A doc, a cliff notes summary, and a presentation that it includes a video that's posted on the website. To me, these actions would show a commitment on our part to communicating with residents regarding affordable housing in ways that are open, proactive, informative, and effective. I really believe that communication like this would be helpful in heading off conflict and in building trust in the ongoing decision-making process regarding affordable housing that we're all involved in. So that is the basics of what I'm advocating, which much of which I have shared with Mr. Quinn and Mr. Mancuso. I have not I did share it earlier this evening with Mr. Nunn. I have not talked with the other committee members about it. I feel um, very strongly about the importance of us doing this, and I would like to uh, throw it out there and see what any thoughts my fellow committee members may have.
the words to, uh, uh, we have reappointed Jim Slate as our engineer for the next three years, which I think was a really uh, good thing for us to do. We have a great engineer, and he's very, very helpful in the things go on. Thank you to Matthew Prendergast, and I just was so proud of seeing our, 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 our class three policemen, plus uh, uh, Mr. Guterres uh, being uh, sworn in tonight. I just think that's, that's one of the nicest things and best things that we can be doing as a committee. So that's all I have to do. And consideration of monthly reports. That's circulating, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, claims for payment ten million four hundred and seventy six thousand twenty four dollars and nine cents. On motion to accept and pay the bills. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Arbenides. Yes. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Dunn. Begrudgingly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Mancuso. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'm going to move this way. So <laughs> <laughs>